just looking at all the snow in the Merlot bucket. It's actually drifted here up, up at Charlotte. This is, this is Project Merlot that we did it the other year. But you can see the snow has drifted into the bucket. So um, it's actually not used it for clearing any snow because where the drive goes up, it's south, it, it gets the sun in the daytime south facing. So it's actually melted and you didn't need it. But if you get any more, that's ideal for moving snow drifts. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an update of Project Merlot. It's still looking splendid. So uh, that paint we bought, obviously, did a good job and the tyres have barely worn at all. I think we bought this just at the right time because they seem to have gone up by about 5,000 quid since we bought this. Um, obviously it needed quite a bit of work. You can you can see the videos later, you know, if you go back to the channel, but it's probably worth 10,000 pound more than we paid for it because they've gone up by about five grand. And obviously we added quite a lot of value to it by respraying it, putting new tyres on it, painting the wheels and generally tidying the whole machine up and putting some new lights on it. But if you're interested in seeing how we did it up, check out the videos. I think if you just put in Ollie Blogs Project Merlot, you'll find them. Bit of snow left there, so we're gonna go sledging on the drift. It's pretty good. We can walk up the bit where it's melted and sledge down that bit. But it's dead deep by the fence. <laughs> Keep this way. Run all the way. Ready? Oh. <laughs> well, I think I've knocked my kneecap off. I'm actually stuck in that I know, well, my leg's stuck under that branch. <laughs> Is what happens if you slip off the road in the snow. <laughs> it's all melted pretty much now, so it just looks a bit funny. Put that out, stop anymore. I'm trying to get down because that van's just around that corner. You see the snow drift here. Is that a Yeti footprint? Anyone know what it is? It's actually too hot to wear a hat at the moment. Oh There's a skyscape in Manchester. Just looking at the uh, diesel fired hot tub. It's going to go in under this gazebo that Charlotte and Dad are building. That's going to go on the walls as well because this used to be a muck heap for when it was stables. There's the roof ready to go on. Just waiting for the sofa beds. Engineering in that. View. Mountain view. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bathroom. Nice grey radiator in there. Don't jump on the beds. In the bathroom there. No, the bathroom. The sofas are arriving on Friday and it's going to be ready pretty much beginning of next week. There isn't an Instagram page, there isn't an Airbnb page for it yet. It's got three bedrooms. But if you go to the link below, Saddleworth Holiday Cottages, that's the current one for the, the smaller cottages got the other side of the, of the hill. So you can message Charlotte on that. Shameless plug, but... Um, she kind of needs to start renting out pretty soon because it's cost a lot of money to build. But the view is amazing, as you can see behind. Back at HQ now, a bit of a puddle in the yard, but the rest of the yard is actually pretty dry, despite us having 19 mil of rain last night. I need my ear cutting again, don't I? I've had a hat on most of the morning. Um, I'm going to go and have a look what the electric board have done because obviously they were fixing it while I was yesterday watching The Lion King. So we'll go and see because apparently you had to, well, I saw them digging up. You had to dig the cable back, joint it, and then refeed it and then put a new kind of like terminal box in underneath the meter because it got hot or something. So we'll go and see what that looks like. Anyway, so reading okay now. So apparently this bit is new because obviously it melted inside the, I say it was L1, but it was L3 that, they've, that it was melted. It said L1 up there though. That is um, the new cable that they've poked through. Apparently they had to joint it underground and then it still smells hot in here and you hear something humming. 
Um, they obviously had to dig down here, the other side of that tree, I think. And that's where they probably made the connection under the ground there. They filled it all back in again. That goes up to the pole there, which is the transformer that we had to put in when we put the solar in. That is the camera that I spun around to see what they were doing. The solar camera, so yeah, neatest job. Fence was already a bit broken. Shame really that they put a new one of them in because that's kind of in the way. We could have done with moving that and then put a new one in after we'd moved it. That would have been handier. I was putting in a hurry when we did the solar. We didn't realise we had to build it. We thought we just got that pole and the wire came down, but they're like, no, no, you need a room. So we had to build this quick. So Philip, who used to work at the uh, other farm at Rainhill, he he was never a bricky, but I think his brother was. So that's how he learned how to be really neat doing brickwork. So he built it for us. And then the lads putting the solar on the roof, they put the roof on this with what offcuts we had left from the shed we were building at the time. That was 2015, but yeah, it's kind of on the corner of the yard now in a way, which is a shame. It used to be at the back corner of the yard, but because obviously we're making the gateway come in in the other direction, it's kind of the first thing you see now, which is a bit of a shame. Got this box of windows here that come out of Joe's house because Joe's put some new windows in his house. So we need to work out which sizes fit best because they're obviously going to be fitted into here now. Richard finished boarding out upstairs yesterday. That's one of the like sort of last jobs we can do before we um, start doing the walls. But it's a job to do in the rain, in the snow. So we've got the stairs, hopefully. I think Trucker Tim, hopefully he's picking them up on Tuesday from Cambridge and then he's bringing them over on Wednesday so we can get them up in here. Oh, there's the girls running over through the birthday bumper. So we'll do that as well in a minute. But yeah, it's looking good. We'll work out where we want to put windows downstairs and where we want to put windows in the offices upstairs and get them put in and then we'll build the straw walls around it. So this is, this is all boarded out now. I've only put a window in here. In fact, I'll look to the new drive, window that way onto the yard and the chipper. So you can see the very moment when something goes wrong. So there's gonna be two offices in this corner. Steps will come up there where that ladder is. But can you see which piece of plywood was on the top of the pile? It's amazing how much it's faded because it was on the top of the pack because they've been stacked down there for a while but we think we're gonna there's my niece we think we're gonna carry on like i said so we've got another steel to put in some timbers but we're going to use some timbers that we've been using for shuttering to do the floors so that's why we've not done it yet because we've not finished doing the shuttering and things around the outside yeah the problem is it's quite dark in here because obviously we've got the roof on and no windows just yet and then not even any lights in it so Rich has obviously been finishing off with these lights yesterday, but it looks pretty decent. I'm, I'm pleased how it's turned out. There's plenty of head height. We were worried that the girders might be in your way, but unless she's kind of like stood right in the corner, no, it just misses. So that's pretty decent. Um, don't know what to cover the floor with yet, but we'll, we'll worry about that again. Main priority now is, is pour the concrete footing for the straw bale walls to come off. So hopefully if the weather's warmed up next week, that's what we can do. This shutter here is all set up. This one is pretty set up. This one's just standing back up, I think, is when I stood on it before. And then we've got, that'll be two sides of it done, and they've got the other two sides to do. But I'm not sure if the old Weybridge cabin's in the way for that. Then we can put the door in and make the bales around it and then start putting the windows in. So, we are doing the birthday bumper today, and we have raised this much so far. £28,313. Anyway, there's a few more names on because it was done quite early yesterday because I was out, but off we go. So we have Hi. Ollie McKenzie, who was 37, Michael Core, who was 38, Dylan Adam Fraser. Oh, I think it's Dylan and Fraser Adam. Dylan and Fraser Adam. Yeah. Ethan Williams, Jim Waring. Waring, Waring, I'm not sure how you spell it. Four, who was 48, Max Cowell, who was 11. 48! <laughs> quick, 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 come on. And we have Tilly Hayward, Adam Thompson, who is 39. We have Sarah Mosley, who is 21, we think. Martin Christopher Poole, who is uh, 41. Turbo Tom Brown. We have Chris Shearer. Yep. I'm going to say. Um, and we have Chris. Chris McLucky, 33. McLucky. And Abby Bella is 16. So happy birthday, everyone on there. Thanks, girls. But yeah. 
£28,330. I think we'll do £30,000 for the Air Ambulance within 12 months of starting it. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Have you both got your seatbelts on? Yeah. All they do pretend they should do is what she's doing, backing up, looking in the mirror. Olivia's having a go with the buggy in low. But I'm not actually sure whether that's legal because it's safer than a quad to drive but it's classed as a tractor and if it's a tractor you have to be 13 on private land but if it was a car it'd be legal and if it was a quad I think it'd be legal so I don't know but she's safe in it but you can get a little small Polaris ones that you can put a geofence around the field I the saw them last year at Chatsworth show and um, what, one of them would actually be quite handy because then you can control the speed off your phone but um, I didn't want to go in on the quad in case she rolls it over the mad thing is a four wheel drive car like that is legal to drive on private land at any age but I don't even trust myself in that around the yard to be honest sorry I mean the chocolate button hopefully it won't be too wet tomorrow because we're going to get this beast on the drill so it's come back from Bill and Joe's and it's now tucked up in the shed ready to go yeah, we get this on the back of that Valtteri in the morning. We've also got Iranian BBC or BBC making programmes for Iran, I think it is. Want to talk about direct drilling and how you can conserve moisture. So they're coming tomorrow, but it's probably going to be raining. We won't be able to use it, but at least if we've got it on the tractor, we can fold it out and explain a little bit how it works. See how that goes anyway. But yeah, that's about it for today. Just a kind of a family kind of day. Not a lot going on on the farm because obviously we had 19 mil of rain overnight. No spraying to do either, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Actually, sorry, one last thing. Don't forget the Real Country File is out today, so that's on the other channel. I'll put a link below to that. And uh, it's another Joe Seals engine with, with two endings. Them drains, glad we unblocked them on Friday. I think it was Friday, was it Thursday? Because they're all running well now. So uh, no flooded Weybridge. Anyway, really is the end now. See you tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed it, even though it was a bit boring. <laughs>